It could turn out to be mankind's biggest technological leap forward, artificial intelligence, AI for short. Unless all the AI endowed robots decide to take over for us someday. Our cover story is reported by David Pogue of Yahoo Tech. For decades, Hollywood movies have taught us two things about robots. First, they'll someday walk on two feet, like people. And second, most of them will eventually turn on us. But in real life, humanoid robots like we see in the movies have always seemed to be 20 years away. Well, don't look now. Last weekend, these robots competed in a competition run by DARPA. DARPA is the military's advanced technology division. You may have heard of some of its previous projects, self-driving cars, GPS, and a little thing called the Internet. DARPA offered three and a half million dollars in prizes for robots that can navigate a disaster rescue scenario. With only intermittent remote control by a human operator, the robots have to perform tasks like driving, turning off a valve, drilling out a wall, crossing a pile of rubble, and climbing stairs. The crowd went wild. It is an extraordinary thing, isn't it? Uh, when the robot does well and it scores a point, everyone cheers as if they're the ones that are getting the point. And then, of course, when the robot teeters and then suddenly falls, Everybody goes, oh, and they sympathize with it. Gil Pratt is the head of the DARPA Robotics Challenge. These are still the Model Ts, and I think that in coming years, first of all, the most important thing is reliability will go up, prices will go down, uh, and we'll find more and more uses for this. So, it just walks? Uh, I think that it just walks. Yes, just walking is a major accomplishment. still a long way from science fiction. Just ask Russ Tedrake, the MIT professor who led MIT's robot in the DARPA competition. Our robot has to actually sit in the passenger seat because he's too big to fit behind the driver's seat. That would be this one. <laughs> Basically, it tried to drive while it was getting out of the car. It broke its wrist. It had to go through the rest of the competition with its right arm just dangling limp. Even with a broken right arm, the robot finished the course one-handed, earning a respectable seven out of eight points. This competition, a few similar competitions, have convinced the world that robots are capable of doing real things in the real world. That has led to massive new investments from Google, Apple, Uber, Qualcomm, you name it. And that's going to mean an acceleration of technology. Things are going to go really fast from here on out. You want to see something cool? Alex Garland would agree. He's the writer-director of Ex Machina, a movie that considers what technology might be like just a little bit in the future. So it seems like thinking robots are all of a sudden a thing again this year in, yeah. in popular culture. Um, why do you suppose that's a resurgence all of a sudden. Why has that happened? I don't know. I've thought about it quite a lot. And I think it may not actually be to do with AI in some respects. I think it's more to do with technology and a fear of technology. Do you have a name? Yes. Ava. But we all have cell phones and we all have tablets and laptops and computers. And we don't really understand how these things work but they seem to understand how we work, um, and that makes us feel uneasy. Do you want to be my friend? Of course. Will it be possible? Why would it not be? Most movies where there's a very smart robot like yours turn out to 
uh, be menacing or threatening in some way, if, if the robot indeed does not turn out to be pure evil. Uh, actually, in the case of this film, Ex Machina, um, uh, I don't think the robot is evil. What I think is that the robot is like us. Uh, it's sentient, and that robot has been unreasonably imprisoned, and like us, wants to get out of that prison. <laughs> we have a bad history, humans, with not respecting sentience, um, and uh, uh, we, we don't want to keep making the same kinds of mistakes. Whether self-aware machines will ever exist is a question researchers debate endlessly. But getting there will require more than advances in robotics. It will also require breakthroughs in AI, artificial intelligence. We'll have to teach machines how to think. Let me say something to Siri, which most people think of as a remarkable human-like intelligence. Sure, sure. So if I say, um, when's the next Cleveland Indians game? The Indians, White Sox game starts at 5, 10 p.m. If anyone knows how close we are to being able to talk to our machines, it's Dag Kitlaus. He and his team created Siri, Apple's personal assistant. Siri, by the way, also began life as a DARPA project. So the first thing that happens is you need to change and understand the sounds that you just had and turn them into words. So that's the first step. And then the words need to be understood. So there's a artificial intelligence inside that understands the context. Now, sometimes I've noticed Siri seems to have a sense of humor. What's the best smartphone? Wait, there are other phones? <laughs> Someone was anticipated and wrote that. It's not really a personality. We anticipated originally that people were going to ask funny questions, and we spent quite a bit of time preparing Siri to be funny and have a little bit of a dry wit. And so, as impressive as Siri is, she's not actually thinking. Everything she says was written in advance by a programmer. But after the Siri team left Apple, they began working on something much, much more ambitious, with much more intelligence. It's called Viv. You would be able to say something like, find me a great place to go, take my kids to the Caribbean in the last week of February. In a split second, Viv will consult several different services on the web, stores, travel agencies, databases, to execute much more complicated commands. The system would know who your kids are, the last five trips that you took, and approximately how much budget you like to spend on those types of vacations. It would begin a dialogue. It all sounds great, but not to everyone. Artificial intelligence, if we succeed in getting true AI that's smarter than us, will be the most powerful technology ever. And it'll either be the best thing ever to happen to humanity or the worst thing. And it's up to us now to see which way it's going to go. MIT professor Max Tegmark is so concerned, he started a group called the Future of Life Institute to consider the dangers of AI. And the, the basic concern is very simple. If you can make a machine which can outcompete us humans on all cognitive tasks, then by definition it's better than us also at programming AI. So the first thing it can do is improve its own software. Now it's even smarter. Then it can do it again and again and again. You're not saying they're going to develop emotions and turn on us willingly, right? Are, are you, is there a distinction there? That's right. There are a lot of misconceptions and one of the most common ones is that somehow if you make a robot really, really smart, it's suddenly going to become sentient, ooh, and it's going to become evil, and it's going to decide to kill all the people. That's completely ridiculous. Being intelligent just means that you're really good at accomplishing your goals, whatever they are, playing chess, getting rich, whatever. You just want to make sure that its goals are aligned with our human goals, and you'll be fine. All the experts agree that recent leaps in robotics and AI should make us both excited and cautious. In the short term, we're safe in terms of having to worry about super intelligences taking over the world. We're talking 50 or 100 years from now before we need to really seriously get too worried about that. Artificial intelligence contains dangers and benefits. And it's not going to be down to the AIs which of those we encounter. It's going to be down to us. You know, robots, artificial intelligence are going to change the way we interact with technology. There's no question. 
that's good. You know, that's a good thing, and we're going to have to adapt, but we're going we're gonna to love what happens.